What's going on guys, Bladezilla here, and today I've got a cool one from Sheer Goroff, a new release, F95 NL, uh, which means inlay, fun fact, that we're going to be taking a look at. This is a Gen 5 knife um, with a new purple carbo tie. So pretty cool one today. I've got lots of cool knives lined up for comparison's sake on, uh, on the new knife, and uh, you know, if you've already watched the CCKS uh, F95 NL Gen 5 knife. This won't be groundbreaking, I suppose, but uh, you know what? It's only a few weeks since that, and we already have the first edition in the new colorway. So buckle up, pour yourself a cup of something either hot or cold. I've got uh, a can of Coke Zero today, so I'm extra pretend sugared up. And we're going to go have some fun here. So a reminder, check out bladezilla.ca. That is my website. That uh, I've got a lot of cool stuff hosted uh, in Canada, ready to go. Uh, so that's bladezilla.ca. But uh, enough of that. That's not what we're here for. We're here for this knife. So let's kick back, relax, and enjoy. So what do we got? F95 NL inlay Gen 5. Let's just take a walk around this for a second here. Look at some of the subtle changes. And then we're going to get into this one. Here we go. Pretty cool. Lots of color. Lots of little things. Little tiny changes. Uh, some big significant ones as well. Uh, you should see some of them from this angle. But uh, let's get started. So, measurements. Any guesses? Feels light. Feels pretty good. All right, eight and three quarter, I believe, is what we're coming in at. I don't know what the official specs are, as, uh, but yeah, it looks like eight and three quarters. Should be still a 95 mil blade, which, uh, if you're looking, it looks to be about four inches, just under uh, four inches. And then handle. What do we got? Four and three quarters, something like that. Somewhere in there. Lots, lots of data should be flooding the internets on this knife uh, with all the specs and whatnot. So, uh, pretty cool. Pretty, pretty cool. Uh, it is an M390 blade. And I know that, uh, you know, in terms of Shura Goroff's production knives, they really. You know, their high-end stuff tends to be M390. And uh, some people go, well, how come, you know, how come we can't do, you know, S90V? How come we're not doing, um, you know, Banex or whatever? And it's pretty simple. You know, M390 is is the gold standard, in my opinion. And, uh, and it's what's available as well, right? It's a great steel. There's no issues with it. And uh, you know what? I don't think that if anyone buys this knife and pays the premium for high-end production, that they're going to be turned off from M390 um, at all. So let's, I guess, let's kind of get started. We'll talk about the front. Um, okay, so whew, where to start? I always have to do this off the top of my head, so uh, where to start? So as far as I know, um, I, I don't know what other production knife that Sheer Goroff's done anything with purple that I can really recall. They've done some custom division knives in that purple kind of, you know, some, some uh, variations and whatnot. But um, it's the first time I think I've recognized purple in any of their handle materials. So uh, their first stop on this, on this knife will be, I believe it's uh, purple and then there's another color. I think it's uh, like a gold inlay or bronze inlay, something like that. I actually don't have any of those here, but um, I'm assuming that'll be coming in the next, you know, handful of weeks. Um, but purple, you know, when I when I first heard about it, I was like, purple on a knife, eh? Like Shiro, they really like their blues. They really like their reds. Uh, you know, some green. I'm going purple. I don't know if purple's for everyone, but when it shows up and you get to look at it. It works real well. It's not loud, and that's kind of what I was expecting it to be—is like super loud. Um, 
the inlays themselves, obviously carbocide, and you know they change at all the different light angles. And if I get closer, if my camera wants to freak out, you can actually see there's milling all over top of that inlay, and it looks almost like a fingerprint, which is super cool. So the detail is definitely top notch. It's certainly there. Um, the other thing, um, just looking at this knife, if I seem to recall. As I roll the knife, you see how at the bottom of the inlay and the top of the inlay, the distance... Let's try that again without the camera freaking out. So look at the, look at the lines on this, right on the frame. See how there's very, very little, if any, gap on the inlay to the titanium? And as I roll this, look at the top of, that tie, of the carbo tie. Look at the gap that is there. So I don't think these scales are actually uh, parallel with the frame. I think they're held elevated at kind of an angle, like if this is the frame, I think it's kind of tilted like that, if that makes sense. So they're not parallel, they're tilted. And that would mean your fingers are gonna be landing on something that's gonna have a little more grip. So I think that's kind of cool. And then obviously, let's be honest, like look, I love looking at the carbo tie how it's all just masterfully done. Uh, the blade, back to that, uh, the blade's now three and a half mil, uh, which if I grab a hacky, you should be able to see the significance in the difference, right? It's a thinner blade and everything seems to be going thinner. So I like it. I'm, I'm definitely, you know, is it half a mil? Is it a big deal? Um, not, not crazy, but it's just, it feels more natural on a knife like this. It really does. It works well. The lines around the knife, you know, feel very natural. You know, you still have the groove for the flipper tab for your fingers to fall in. T you know, tolerances are tighter than ever, which you'd kind of expect. Really nicely done. You know, I always uh, used to talk about that spot right there and how it's, you know, so it's a pinch point for some people. And, you know, to alleviate that, they put some nice bevels around there. So, in terms of the knife itself, it feels very similar, but it, in my hand, feels thicker with the reduction of the blade, you know, because anytime you reduce the blade thickness, you're, you're pretty much putting these two slabs of titanium closer together. So now you're adding the thickness of the inlay to the outside because it's protruding a little further at an angle. It feels, it feels natural. Like it just fits my hand nicely. It's very well done. It's insanely well done. Um, if we walk the perimeter of the knife, we can see you've kind of got some micro milling on the corners and should be on the bottom under my thumb. I can't actually see, but it should be micro milled up here, which looks terrific down by my thumb, and as we make our way back, we see that beautiful Shirogorov bear, which is no longer on the blade, which I love. We've kind of got, it looks to be like a stone wash on the flats, which, you know, if it's a, like, a production knife should be a user in my opinion, and the fact that it's got stone wash on the flats, it just hides scratches so nicely. You know, and then you remove the, the bear off the blade, it means that you're not going to be cutting into it and rubbing that off. I still wish M390 wasn't on the blade. I wish that was kind of tucked in, like up here or something. But you can't win them all. One at a time. One battle at a time. So we've got all the beveling around the edges. You still have the screw that's popped up off the frame as well to add support instead of milling that flat. That's another process just to do that. All the milling on the sides, just nicely done, nicely rounded off all the way around. Then we flip it around the back, we see up the top, same, same profile, same milling there, same milling down there. We've got micro milling on the clip, which this spot right here would be a terrific photo area. And that clip, I'm gonna take a look at that hat. Is that a little different? No, no, similar. Um, and then underneath on the lock bar, we also have a ton of micro milling. And this is, this is probably my favorite area of the knife when you start looking at the, the lock bar bend. Like, it's just so well done. 
just incredibly well done. And then, then even on the, in the uh, inlay on the back, you can kind of start to see, I hope you can see this line above the clip where they've actually milled it down flat and flush, and then laid it even underneath the clip. So as you go in and out of your pocket, you're not going to risk peeling that inlay off somehow, even though it's bonded quite uh, intently. You never know. Um, just well done. And then once again, the beveling around on the hardware. You can see that bulge over top of that little pivot, adding strength to it. Just de well thought out details on the Gen 5. Still rounded all around the frame. And then as we get up towards the lock bar here, we've got the, the roll on the lock bar itself, which is elevated in terms of sticking above the show side. So as I roll, you should see right here, see how it just pops up. So super comfortable in hand to lock, unlock, etc. Very easy. We've got a metal lock bar insert, which I, which I still don't know the steel that they're being used, which should double as an over travel stop as well. And that being so that you can't bend the lock bar past the frame. You know, sure go off in my opinion at this price point, like you're you're marginally above a Chris Reeves. And uh, there is nobody doing a production knife at this level, in my opinion. S like nobody at that price point. It's just done so well. The blade, once again, you've kind of got some changed um, jimping to match the backspacer, which seems to be a thing they're they're doing more and more of with uh, obviously some exceptions to every rule. But the backspacer, you can kind of see it's a geared pattern that's got some additional milling to it, right? It starts wide, full frame, and then that kind of pinches down towards the pocket, uh, sorry, the uh, lanyard hole on the back, which is hidden into that backspacer, which is just gorgeous. And I like this one more than the old backspacer because it's just more pronounced, there's more work going on it, and it looks great. You know, if I were to change something, and let's be honest, nobody cares what I think, I'd like to fill that gap up right there. Which, let's be honest, if you're going to add more material, then the balance of the knife is probably in jeopardy. And, you know, it becomes a different conversation. So, Shirogorov is very much in tune with what they're doing. They're not doing anything by accident, and that will not be an accident why it's done that way. So, it's beautifully done. The blade itself, we obviously have a little bit of a, a pocket in the top here, which is kind of, uh, you know, a little different. You know, to me that looks very fighter jetty, kind of the cockpit of like a, you know, a Raptor or something. I just think it looks cool. Practically, I don't see much of a use for it, but maybe there is one. I don't know. You know, there's some bevels obviously on the cutting edge of the blade that kind of deflects away from, from the frame. So I don't know. Maybe there's a purpose to that. I just think it looks cool. And if we compare that with the Hattie, which is essentially an F95, you can kind of see what I'm talking about on the blade. Sheer bar off there, we still have the jimping up top, but there's no cool beveling. And I think that's something that's very similar uh, on the F95 NL Custom Division knife. That's what this reminds me of. So, it just looks different. It's modern, it's 2024. We have access to some cool tooling and whatnot, so why not do it? And as a reminder, I'm gonna show you some other knives here. Um, whatever's closer to the bottom of the screen will appear bigger. So if I grab a uh, Stellar, for example, I put that up here, it's gonna look, I think, more representative to size than if I put it below. So there's a Stellar and an F95, or sorry, Hattie. Same thing, you've probably seen this knife, you know, a dozen times. Uh, Stellar is obviously a newer design for them. See how much bigger that looks down below than above. It's just funny how that uh, comes through on camera. But the Stellar is kind of their newest production knife. And, you know, looking at this, I'm, I'm shocked I didn't pick up on some of those features. Um, you know, if they're going to refresh the F95, which you'd think would go into a refresh on a Neon and so on and so forth. But it's like, there's a lot of design cues on this knife that's just kind of translate over, right? You know, the bear on the handle. They obviously are doing something there. They know about this. The kind of cool design on the, the cutout on the blade. Like, 
I like that. It's got a captive pivot as well, so that's not going to spin when you're uh, when you're taking it apart and lubing up those MRBS. You like that little leeway there. Um, you know, CPS is a little bearing underneath the cap of that. That you know is kind of drilled into a hole and it doesn't spin. Which you know when they're new, it shouldn't matter, but. Think about the knife as an investment if you're a year or two down the road and you're like, yeah, you know what, these bearings are a little, a little dry. I would like to rebuild them. And uh, it just helps that process a little bit more. So rather than this, I'm gonna put this actually at the bottom and we're gonna bring in some other knives and do our usual. So that to me is more representative of size comparatively. Uh, we'll bring in a production Neon, which, uh, is a modified neon, but same thing. You get the picture. You get the picture. Um, we do still have, I think, one of these uh, F95 CCKS knives. So I should have picked up on this, but I didn't. That inlay. So there is the CCKS knife for comparison's sake, for color. Uh, you know, because the first thing that I see when I look at this knife is I thought, wow, this is really satiny and it's no, it's stone washed, whereas the other one's kind of got that gold anno. But design elements, identical. Super cool knife. So there's your CCKS. We showed the neon. Do we want to get into any fancy stuff? Do we want to do other ones? I could do an F3. I've got one of those beside me. Another production knife. A little more on the entry level point, but it kind of gives you the, you know, the idea of sizing. You know, a heavily underappreciated knife would be the F3 in my opinion, because they do all the different micartas. And I think this one is actually LMAX, which is super cool. There, there you go, LMAX. And that's not just painted, that's an actual pressed in kind of plastic red piece. And they come with a back spacer, which is G10. Super cool knife. Um, in terms of the other knives, well, I don't know how intense we want to go today. We can do our Hattie, Hattion, sorry. We can do our, our Neon NL, just to kind of see some inlays as well. Um, if I want to actually get them in the frame, maybe I should center them. Just gonna put that out there. Sorry guys, I, I, I don't really play in this. I just kind of do. And these are the same size for reference, so that should give you an idea of the angle of the camera. And then I guess I'll walk down the, the Vegas V-Cards knives as well. Same knife, different, different backspacer. Super cool, super, super cool knives. Mini cannabis, sorry. We can look at the Kami. Which is an awesome knife. Heavily underappreciated those commies. I think those are going to catch on fire. We can do an RJ Martin kind of collaboration piece, which is essentially the same size, but will look giant. And what I'll do is just to kind of show that. See what I'm saying? How ridiculous the angle is on that. It's leaned hard today because it's uh, it's dark right now, and uh, I'm trying to get light on it. We can do an F. Five silk, slim, super sick knife. My only F95 custom division, uh, actually, oh, other than my NL, which I guess there's an old school NL. I've done a video on that one as well. And uh, one of my early custom division pickups. We can do the bio series. I'm just gonna grab the light and the dark. Light is up top, dark down below, light reflecting all over the top one and not so much on the bottom one based on the coloring. We already did a Hattie and we'll do a Quantum, I may as well do a Quantum. You guys want to see that? Quantum Blue. This is not the knife that is up on the site. There's another one. This one is mine. And then I guess the Sigma and Paro I can do as well. And then we'll get into some other ones that are a little different. 
There we go. Also very cool knives, carbon fiber, slicey as hell. Uh, what else do we want to do? We can do... I've got some quantums here for reference. There's a quantum inlay and the quantium. Production knives as well to give you the, the quantum comparison. And then do we want to do Astrum? We could do Astrum as well here. Or do we want to do 111? I'll do 111. We'll do one at a time here. All right. I don't know if you've seen this one yet on the channel. The 111 Starship, which is a mega beast. And is pretty much going to make kindling out of anything in... Uh, in the Shirogorov world. Super cool knife, lots of taste to it, lots of features on it. Um, I haven't filmed this knife yet, but uh, this one will be at some point available on the site. But, you know, you've got, in my opinion, some of the highest detail that they've done. You know, you look at the milling on the pivot and it kind of steps down around the pivot and then steps down again into the body and then steps down a fourth time um, all different tiers of micro milling, and then you've kind of got the horizontal left and right milling, reverse flickable blade and a cutout, which I obviously can't reverse flick because I'm a little whiny person. Um, and then a new pocket clip, which looks terrific. Magna cut, I believe on this one. So they're obviously going down the magna cut road, which is pretty, pretty exciting for them. Which you kind of wonder at one, what point Magna Cut's going to bleed into their production. It might. It might not. Full back spacer as well. If it wants to focus. So a real cool, highly desired piece. That video on this will probably be this week. Because I want to get that one listed. And then Astrum. You guys have seen the SR Sprint Run. Uh, this is an Astrum. A little different one. Custom Division, which is uh, newer for them. I think there's, I don't know if all of them have been released quite yet, or about 25 of them or so have. Uh, but a little different knife, um, camera. I'm curious to actually watch this video to see how, uh, how the camera does justice to the coloring on this. But um, really cool knife, lots of milling. Lots of milling, very, very beautiful knife. Um, excited to do a video on that one as well, and this one will hit the store at some point. But um, there you go. Astrum CD and then Magna Cut as well, which is, uh, which is awesome. Totally awesome. Lots of detail work, but these are some things that will be coming down the pipe at some point in the next week or so. If uh, if more <laughs> colors of these knives don't uh, arrive, then you know, they're, they're, they're coming. So, okay. Well, a lot of knife comparison. I want to get a weight on this. I don't think I did that yet, but I'm guessing it's in the, you know, four and a bit ounce uh, conversation. So let's get my scale here. Any guesses? And yes, you are going to wait and watch because I am not stopping the camera. 4.4. Is that right? 4.4. Now, I can't remember what the old production ones were going, uh, but that seems lighter. I had 4.5 or 4.6 in my head, but, you know, there's a lot of things in my head. Whether they're right or whether they're wrong is another conversation. But, you know, 4.4, definitely manageable with a 4-inch blade because at the end of the day, you want to have the ounce to blade ratio kind of pretty close. And in this case, and I guess I should specify that. So if it's a 3-inch blade, you want it to weigh 3 ounce. If it's a 3.5-inch blade, you want it to weigh kind of 3.5 ounce. If it's a 4-inch blade, you want it to weigh 4 ounces. That's the magic ratio. 
Uh, in this case, you know, we're slightly over that, but it's full titanium with some inlays. So, kind of is what it is. Um, obviously, the internals are all skeletonized, which I'm going to try to grab my light here and show. I'm gonna shine that down inside. So you can see it's all kind of big, deep pockets. It's not just the uh, kind of filler. It's real. This is their high-end work internally. The pocket clip, as you can see, is also attached internally via screw, which is that proprietary screw. I can never say that word. Proprietary screw. But lots of milling done inside this thing to save weight and provide balance in a specific sort of way. And then the frame itself, uh, I've had to see some people, they cannot figure out how to, to hold a Shiro. Because I find, in my experience, you know, a lot of people like to grab the front of the lock bar. And as soon as you're holding the front somehow, or your fingers on it like that, and you're trying to launch it out, or your thumbs on it, it won't go. So I find, when your finger's on the clip, the clip takes your pressure and angles it into the frame versus the lock bar. As you can kind of see on the clip there, see how it's stacked against the frame. So you hold that clip, zero pressure on the knife, and it will come out every single time. But the action on this one's real nice. Like real nice. So, the, so these are on multi-row bearings, and it will say that uh, typically on the inside right here. So I'm going to grab my little light, if that's still the case. Do we see MRBS in there? I think we do. Multi-row bearing system. Um, and if we recall multi-row bearing system, it's like their single row bearing. So if they're single row bearings, their entry point, typically, with a few exceptions, that's a ball bearing in a circle on a track. Kind of like what you'd think a standard ball bearing pivot would be. Multi-row bearings instead of a single ball on the track, it's kind of three in a row in a pinwheel pattern. Think of it like the rays of a sun around a track drilled into a bigger track. So the action doesn't really change a whole lot between the two. Once an MRBS knife is worn in and a SRBS single row bearing or SRB single row bearing is worn in, um, they tend to actually feel very similar. But what it does is it provides more side to side stability because you're increasing the surface area uh, for deflection on the knife, if that makes sense. So it's, you know, some custom division knives have MRBS. So it's, it's a real nice proven system and one that I don't see them going away from anytime soon, unless they want to come out with the Bladezilla bearing system, which uh, has yet to be patented. And I don't know what it is. And it probably sucks. Just saying. Um, back into the physical design, we can see on the flipper tab, it is nice and in front of that pivot. I'm curious, curious to see that Hattie again. Which would be the F95 skeleton. So to me, if it wants to focus, uh, I think we're in the same spot. And the reason I asked that is because if uh, if we compare that to, say, the Tom Mayo, Dr. Death, see how far back that pivot is? Or, sorry, the flipper tab is from the pivot? What that tends to mean is that, think of this as the gears on your bicycle, and the further away behind the pivot, it's like a bigger gear on your bike, more teeth on the cassette. So what that means is it's an easier uh, easier gear, which means that when you flip it out, it will fail sometimes because it requires more force, which isn't a big deal. But as long as you know that you've got to give it a little juice, then, uh, then you just end up flicking it a little harder or give it some body English and it's not a problem. But if you take the same force of this Tom Mayo Dr. Death and you apply that to a knife where it's in front of the center of the pivot, and it'll just hammer right out because you're adding a little bit more force to it artificially. You're, you're increasing the ratio on it. Where that matters is when you start getting into like 111s, 
where the blade is a lot longer and heavier, um, you know, you want to be able to have a nice comfortable release. The blade's heavier, so they tend to move that a little more forward, I find, which is cool. And, uh, well, let's take a look at I have it. There you go. So you see how it's like, it's, it's forward of center on the 111. That was a guess. I just used it as an example, but it is a little more forward between the two. So, there you go. Uh, in terms of Shergroff going above the MRBS, obviously, they have uh, roller bearings. So single row roller bearings, and then they have double row roller bearings. Uh, single row roller bearings are kind of, you know, typically custom division, uh, some collaboration pieces, some special editions. You know, they... Uh, Recently had that real cool Quantum uh, WKM, which had roller bearings on it, which was not a CD knife, which is uh, hopefully a sign of things to come. But um, where am I going with this? Um, MRBS, super, super solid, super cool, nothing too crazy. It's uh, smooth as hell, and uh, I'm not worried about it. But back to the flipper tab. Uh, good jimping. Solid placement in terms of comparing to a Quantum. Uh, let me grab my Quantum. There we go. So a production Quantum. This one's a single row bearing monkey edge frag. You can kind of see how the flipper tab on a Quantum is built into the front at a nice little angle, which is super sick. And a lot of people love it because it's a little further ahead. But, you know, you just reach forward and pull whatever is the furthest thing away. Whereas the F95, you kind of get in a nice little spot which your finger falls into, and it's just very natural, right? Because the F95 is essentially like Shirogorov's Sabenza. It's their tried and true design. And lo and behold, when you go into the, the Neon, you know, which is essentially a small F95, that's kind of the direction they've gone with that. They have not made a little baby Quantum, as far as I'm aware, other than the Mini Quantum, which is a completely different knife, um, which is whatever. Um, in terms of everything else on the knife, fit in hand, very similar. The jimping feels a little bit rougher because it appears to be a little deeper as well. Um, you still have the flat tops, but it just feels a little deeper than the old knife. You can still get down in front, but it does pinch towards the, the middle of the blade here. If it wants to focus on that, there we go. Uh, if it, it does pinch, so I wouldn't really push past the jimping. And then the knife tip itself kind of adds swells back out, that's what she said, and then provides a little bit of strength. So real nice, um, you know, beveling around the handle, very similar, fit in hand, very similar. It just fits like a glove. And, you know, everyone that, that I talk to, if they're saying, hey, what, what should I get as my first knife to experience your gore off? I always say, get an F95, because that's their large Sabenza, and uh, it's what they've made, uh, they essentially built their company on. So it's, now I guess you could argue a Stellar might be a nice middle ground, but uh, I still think, you know, frame lock folder, titanium, you know, Gen 5 with cool inlays. I'm excited to see what the new version looks like with the, the gold or the bronze inside it. Um, nonetheless, uh, I'd probably still go with an F95 now that the load bears on the handle. I just think that's so good. I love it. Uh, centering on the blade, it sh you know, it should be dead center, let's be honest, it is. And the tolerances and, and uh, everything's just that much tighter now that the blade is 3.5mm in instead of 4mm width. The lock bar as well, uh, the metal lock bar insert is uh, totally, uh, you know, able to replace, etc. Uh, externally, which I think is a Torx bit. That looks right, yeah, looks like Torx, which is kind of what they've been doing, with a few exceptions on some of the old knives. They're actually putting the bit on the outside, right? And then some of the newer versions, they're actually attaching it uh, from the inside, which uh, I don't have any custom division. I'm just going down the list here. I don't have any little uh, NLs gone. Um, yeah, so they would kind of screw it in from the outside, so anyway. Um, yeah, a little, little change there. Um, the hardware itself, so it's it's a flathead. Like, let's not bullshit here. It's a flathead screwdriver. Um, do you need the Sheargroff tool? No. Would it be nice to have? Yes. 
Um, if you're spending 1100 1200 1300 bucks on a production knife, then yeah, you know what, like, get the tool, you're not gonna have any problems. In a, in a pinch, you can use a penny, you, you know, because the penny's a softer material than the hardware. You can use a folded up credit card, uh, but once you buy a knife like this, your credit card's pretty well useless anyway, so may as well just use that. I'm just kidding. Uh, yeah, the tool's pretty simple. You can kind of go with a couple different routes. You can go with the cyber tool, which is this guy, which allows you to kind of, uh, let's move that away, allows you to bend the, the tool and provide some uh, you know, force. It's magnetic. You can put the bits inside. They're stored in the handle. Or you go with like the custom division tool, which is this guy, which uh, has five bits instead of four, and uh, it has the reverse bit that the custom division have. And then in the top, obviously, they're all individually numbered. A little more expensive, but carbon fiber and carbon fiber CF equals dollar sign, dollar sign. But uh, the bits between the two are uh, shared, so you can kind of change it up if you want. Uh, they do have some pen tools as well, which uh, seem to actually haven't really done a pen tool in a while. Hopefully they hopefully can get some more pen tools because they're a little cheaper and usually they're just like two bits, maybe three. Uh, so small, medium, large, just on the standard Shiro bits. But I've done the weight, I've held it in my hand, talked about the M390, talked about the bear on the handle, metal lock bar and spurt, the new cutout in the blade which comes from the NL custom division slash stellar I guess now. The micro milling on the clip is tremendously done well. And the uh, beveling etc all around. The lock bar looks great with its micro milling. Uh, the blank on the other side here on the hardware just really just a really solid update to the F95. Um, you know, if purple's not your thing, I would stay tuned because obviously there's going to be some, you know, I was reading Shirogoroff's Facebook page today and, uh, and they were talking about um, other variants of this. And let's be honest, like, why wouldn't they do other variants? Like, why wouldn't they do a blue? Why wouldn't they do a red? Maybe a green? Unless they're kind of keeping it funky. And going, hey, let's do purple. You know, they did teal already on the CCKS knife. You know, maybe that's the new direction. Maybe we're going to see some real different things on this carbo tie inlay. Um, but I would think that blue would be around the corner. I would think red would. And, uh, you know, maybe white. Or maybe we're just going to see like another, like, uh, like a stealth black. Just all... All black, but the, the beauty of the carbo tie and the beauty of this is you throw a color into the mix, you personalize it to your liking, and it's not loud. And the thing changes so much that I think it'd be kind of a waste to just do black carbon. Throw some white in there, throw whatever, some gold. It's a beautifully done knife. I think there's going to be a lot of happy people um, on the new update. Um, you know, is it a evolution or a revolution? I think it's an evolution. I think it's it's was due for a little bit of an update. They made some subtle changes, and I don't think it's going to disappoint anybody. I think if you're looking for the revolution and the big update, you're you're not going to find it. You're you're getting a knife that has some very subtle hints at some adjustments, some tweaks, some fine tuning on a, a design that's now what 12 years deep, and. Um, it's done well. I don't know what else you want. You know, from here, the suggestions I would make, personally, um, don't matter. <laughs> because I like the knife the way it is. You know, I want M390 off the blade. That's it. I, I want it at a different spot, off the cutting surface. It's like, okay, we can do that. That's about it. It's going to be a great user. You guys are going to love it. Um, you know? It, it is an expensive knife, but if you're in a if you're in the you know the gap that's hey I, I've been into some high end production stuff, you know I've got some some Chris Reeves maybe I've got some Hinders some uh, some other other stuff in that kind of price point it's not going to be a big leap, but as soon as you get it you're going to realize why it's a it's an expensive knife, you know is it a is it a three four five thousand dollar custom division knife nope. 
but is it a complete step up of the competition at the $1,000, $1,500 price point range? Yep, it certainly is. So, there you go. That is the F95NL Gen 5 new knife from Shir Goroff uh, that I've just spent apparently 35, 40 minutes on. I don't know how that happened. I'm sorry. But check out the website, bladezilla.ca. Uh, if you want to order one, I'll have, uh, I'll have a handful of these up as soon as they're available. And then, um, you know, anything else? Hit me up, Instagram, TikTok, etc. Send me a note and let's chat. More than anything, it's a hobby. Or leave a comment below. We are on YouTube, I assume. Uh, unless it's 2029 and all of a sudden we're re-uploading onto a different site. Which I doubt. So there you go. There is the F95NL Gen 5 in purple carbo tie with an M390 blade. And uh, I think that's going to be it. Alright guys, have yourselves a great week. And we will talk soon. Peace.